Hi, I'm John for Proper Printing and this video is going to be a bit different. I've got this green screen behind me and I've got this vintage piece of gaming rig which is almost as old as YouTube itself and I'm going to use this for reference for designing those rims. I'm going to show you a bit more in depth of how I'm designing in Fusion and this will be the first time for me using generative design. So this is going to be a learning experience for me as well. Let's head over to the computer and start designing a rim. Okay, we're at my computer. And I recently found out that Canon has a webcam utility, which I'm using now so I can use my Canon camera as a webcam. I should have had this back in the days when I was a gamer to show you how that would look like I, if <laughs> I've installed Call of Duty 2. This was my game and I've opened it and there weren't any surface out there. I've never felt so alone. Those days are gone. So I will just get back to engineering. Job. Yeah. Oh shit. Hot. Jesus. Quit. So I will just get back to engineering. I already did a bit of research to find out which rim fits that Mercedes, and it turns out to be this one. So the rim is this size, and the 6.5 is the width of the rim. The 15 is the diameter. And this number over here is the offset of the rim, but more about that later. It was pretty difficult to find a decent drawing of some proper dimensions of the rim. I found a few, none of them were perfect, but I think to, in combination with all the drawings I found, I should be able to design a rim. I really like this one because this is what I sort of have in mind for these rims. This rim in particular is made out of two pieces and on here, in this ring, it's mounted together. There are two reasons for me to go with this approach. The first, I don't think that I can put a tire around this ridge over here. So I think it will just break. Yeah, and the second reason, which is paramount, is that I need a lot less support when using this construction over here. So I think that this is the best approach for, for 3D printed rims. Uh, and I found a drawing here with some dimensions and another profile here, which I can use to, um, yeah, as a reference as well. And I have my vintage gaming rig. It's made out of a 19 inch rim. So hopefully with all this information, I will be able to design a rim which will fit the car and which will fit the tire and uh, which is printable. So this is going to be interesting. First thing that I'm going to do is draw a line with a length of six and a half inch. So I can use that as a reference dimension. Start a sketch on on this plane over here. Uh, I can draw a line. If you have a part which is somewhat symmetric or completely symmetric, it's uh, a lot easier when you use this center point as a midpoint of your complete design. So it's easier to use uh, mirror features and those kind of things. That width of 6.5 inch is going to be a line from here to there. I use millimeters of course, but let's see what happens if I do 6.5 inch. 6.5 times 25.4 Oh, nice, that's working. So this will be my reference line. Make it a construction line and a line again from here to there. Sometimes my mouse bounces a bit, so I have two lines. I think I have to buy a new mouse quite soon. Okay, and within this reference, I can insert that picture. And now I can see how far I have to scale this. Oh, it has already a center line here, so that's convenient. This is an approximation. I'm going to use this as a reference. This line is the wheel diameter, so it's 15 inch. So 15 inch divided by 2 is 7.5 inch. 7.5 inch. Okay. So now I have my reference over here. I'm just guessing those dimensions and make it as close as possible. 
one important thing when you're drawing is everything is defined and a defined line is black you can define lines by constraints and dimensions for example this line has a coincident with this origin it's vertical and it has length so this whole line is determined nice and now i can do an offset i'm going to use a nozzle of 1.2 millimeter in diameter so i'm going to make it 4.8 one important thing is that this over here in which all those all these screws go must be at the same level as this here and this has a, an offset of 37 millimeters so let's go back and draw that offset of 37 so that goes over here so i'm going to screw bolts through here hmm. So the heads of the bolts are going to be here and the thread will be here. So I think that this design could work. Okay, now this profile is finished. It's closed. You can see that it's highlighting when I'm going with the mouse over it. So now I can go to solid and select this revolve and select this profile. And as a center line, I can select this axis and now we have the rim so now you can see why it's e why it's a good idea to use this as a center i can go back to the sketch and i can already design a flange over here those will be two separate bodies but that's needed for that generative design anyway okay i did a quick search for that mounting pad how that is designed that's not too difficult i hope the bolt pattern is five bolts with a pitch of 112 millimeter now this is at 37, so that's nice. Draw a line from here to there. And it has a bore as well. And the bore is 66.6. .6. So undo. The bore is 66.6. .6, so make it 67. Finish sketch. And I can select this feature again and use two profiles. Okay, so now I have two bodies. And now I can add that whole pattern on here. So I start with circle on this plane with a diameter of 112. And this line must be must be a construction line. Or well, first a line. Again a construction line. Can add a hole here of a bit larger than 12, 12.5. And I can create a circular pattern of this thing on here with the center point there and there are five of them this is one way to do it this is not the way i'm going to do it i'm going to extrude it already from here all the way to there and what i can do circular pattern so now i can select features select this hole and the axis select again this axis with five and i'm going to do it in this way because if i'm going to for example add a chamfer somewhere of let's say uh, 10 and I'm going to select that feature then I can select an extra feature and that's also copied so it's easy to use this design pattern on these features and not within the sketch okay before I'm going to continue with the design I'm going to remove this rim so I can take up some measurements here and see better how this thing is mounted to the car Okay, I have the dimensions, so now I'm able to finish this part over here. My guess was that it was 60 millimeters wide, but it's uh, 55. And I have to make another circle on here. Extrude, chamfer, select this again, this pattern, and add some extra features. Okay, 
This rim is finished and I've never done a generative design before but I found a video which shows pretty well how a rim is designed using generative design. And it's uh, this video by TFI. I'm going to put a link into the description of this video and I'm going to use this video as a reference for uh, making the generative design. I'm going to cut out one fifth of this rim. All right. And I have to design an obstacle geometry where the obstacle geometry is. No material is going to be generated. So now I have this obstacle geometry. And now I can go to the generative design tab. And the preserved geometry will be this. And well, the rim, of course. That's what we want to preserve. And the obstacle is this one. Okay. And I have to make some structural constraints. And those are going to be this face, that face, and that one over here. So now this is fixed. And this part will be the part which all load is pressed on. So I'm going to add a structural load. The force will be at the place where the tire is touching the rim. There and there. And according to his calculations, it was a force of 2000 Newton. I'm just going to try this. That's the first load case. I can add another one. And now it must be into this direction, 90 degrees. And now I can copy this one and do it into the other direction. Select the objectives. First, I'm going to minimize mass and see what's, hap what ha what's happening. Manufacturing, we're not going to mill this thing. Only ad additive, minimum thickness. Let's make it 3.6. I have to assign a material. It's going to be plastic. Both plastics are nylon, and I want to print out of nylon. I also want to print out of ABS. ABS, okay, nice. Hmm. I can select polycarbonate as well. Well, let's hit generate and see what's happening. Hmm. Okay, I've contacted Autodesk to ask if it's possible for me to try generative design before buying cloud credits. And their suggestion was to make a new account and start a trial. So I have 30 days time <laughs> to try that generative design. So I've made a new account, follow at properprinting.pro and I've exported the rim from my old account and I've imported in here with my new account. And I didn't even have to change any of these studies or load cases, it was already saved within that file well let's generate and see what happens it looks like i can grab a cup of coffee okay the results are in it took a bit more than an hour fortunately we have some converged outcomes here on what it looks like here let's say i go for outcome six let's see how outcome six looks like <laughs> Holy. Okay, this one is pretty solid. Okay, let's see how another one looks like. Outcome one. Oh, another one. <laughs> this is fun to do. Outcome three. I want to see them all. Nope, that's not going to be it. Outcome five. This could look pretty cool. <laughs> let's see what a seven looks like. No. Number eight. Wow. Very weird shape. Nine. This is going to hold. I'm having difficulties believing that. It's looking cool. I will keep outcome nine. Outcome 10. <laughs> no, not outcome 10. Another one. Outcome 11. It's the last one. No. No. Okay. I've got three outcomes here. One is the biggest with the most material. This one is looking the coolest and this one is a bit in between. I can only select one outcome and generate a design for that outcome. I've selected this best looking outcome. Create design. Okay, open the design. And here is the generated design. Oh man, this is, this is so sick. I can generate a circular pattern and make five of them. <laughs> oh, this is so sick. Okay, and now combine all of these bodies. This is definitely not what I expected how this would come out. 
but it's looking awesome. I'm curious what my slicing software thinks of this design. Import the rim. 6.8. Oh, scale 1 to 10. What? Okay. <laughs> um, the amount of plastic is 2.5 kilo. So, I need some bigger spools. I'm going to use M8 hexagon bolts to mount both of these parts together. Now I can split these two bodies. So I just split the body, this body, and the tool, this face over here. If I'm going to hide this one, then I can print this and this one. And I have to make this air tight. That's better. And I can fill this up with glue or an o-ring. Okay, I found valves which I can buy here. They are pretty cheap. I've managed to create a hole here for a valve stamp. All right. I think this is it. My rib is finished. I can print this flat without much support. And the same goes with for this. It looks different than I expected, but definitely better. So this will be my initial design. <laughs> I'm <laughs> so curious how this is how this will look under that Mercedes. It's going to be ridiculous. For this video, this is it. I'm going to work on <laughs> on that printer so the printer is able to print this. <laughs> it's going to be so large. This is it. I hope you have enjoyed watching and uh, learned a thing or two. Yeah, if you did, then please hit that like button. If you haven't subscribed already, please consider doing so. Of course, I'm going to print this rim and put it under that Mercedes to see if it holds. I'm still a bit skeptical, but um, according to the calculations, this would just work fine, of course. And I can uh, continue working on that printer. I'm still waiting for some parts to arrive. They will arrive soon, so I can <laughs> continue working on that one. But now you know what I'm going to print first. Again, thanks a lot. And uh, we'll see you in the next video. Bye. Oh, <laughs> just in time.